Hey y'all. Welcome, welcome my babes. Welcome, welcome to September. Welcome to a transition point. September is a space that is extra potent and extra delicious when it comes to medicine wheel living and medicine wheel cyclical existence. And I say that because it is a transition point. It is a place where we shift from fire season into water season, where we shift from the south direction into the west direction. Before we get into all that, let's take a brief moment to give ourselves a little bit of a shout out <laughs> around how well we did during fire season, right? Oftentimes in those spaces, and we're still ultimately in fire season technically. So this is gonna speak to what I'm going to get into more in depth for this particular teaching in this video. We are still technically in fire season for most of the month of September. It's not until to the end, the 20th to the 23rd of September that we shift officially into water season. However, when we are at a transition point where the wheel is turning, it gives us the chance to continue to practice our ability to flex multiple things at one time. And I'm, what I mean by that when I say it is we are in fire season and then we shift into water season. Now, it's not just a hard cut off immediately, it's done, all components of fire season are gone and now we're into water season. That's not how it works. There's this blending that happens. It's kind of like this bleeding into each other process. So when it comes to September, December, um, March and June, those are the four months where the wheel turns. And so we for sure feel a varied expression. We for sure feel a little bit of both things going on. So back to my initial statement, good job during fire season, good job being forged in that fire, good job being willing to feel that unrest and that disruption of fire season, that activation. And hopefully now at this point in time, we can start shifting into some cooler waters. Hopefully we can start shifting into some releasing and a place where we are starting to gain some semblance on based on what was activated during the south direction. We can gain some semblance on how we want to move forward. We can start to decide and discern what needs to stay and what needs to go, all right? So let's talk about this transition concept. On your medicine wheel, <clears throat> the west direction speaks to sisterhood and releasing. And because there are three months available to us, we are going to get into all those details. We're gonna get into sisterhood. We're gonna get into releasing. For this particular video and this particular teaching, the focus and the emphasis is on the transition point. It's on what happens when we are leaving one thing and shifting into another. Because again, we've got multiple energies happening at the same time. And it's important that we honor that, you know? Transition points matter. Transition points are thresholds that we celebrate. In general, we are a very ceremonial people. We celebrate things constantly. We celebrate a coming of age in some form or fashion with a sweet 16 or maybe a bar or bat mitzvah or, you know, uh, a moon cycle ceremony. You know, it depends on where your lineage comes from. But coming of age is something that we honor in a lot of different ways. Birthdays, uh, anniversaries, graduations, weddings, funerals. Anytime that we are shifting and crossing a threshold, we celebrate that. And the reason that we celebrate those things is because it's important to acknowledge the power that is shifting. It is important to acknowledge the power that is emerging and manifesting in a new way than the ways that it has in the past or the ways that it has previously. So September is going to be focused on the transition of fire to water from south to west. And there are a uh, few rituals that I'm gonna provide for you. There is a song in particular that I'm gonna sing for you and sing with you ultimately. And I'm going to spend this next bit of time teaching you and speaking to how we can honor ourselves through a transitionary space. How we can continue to reinforce the belief system that we are the entire wheel. And again, it's the 
four months where the wheel turns within that month that afford us the opportunity to practice that and to get more comfortable in that. Being the entire wheel means that we have the capacity to express and feel multiple things, seemingly oppositional things all at one time. You know, as expressions of the universe and extensions of source energy, we are the entire universe. We are the entire planet just in this body. We are the entire wheel. So here in September, when we start to feel the watery releasing, when we start to feel the experience of, it's time to let this go. While we are still in an activation space of, oh, this is so frustrating, this is so angering, or I'm really sad about this, or I'm not ready to let this go, this month gives us the chance to start to do that dance. This month gives us the chance to have one leg on either side and sort out how to get comfortable, how to strengthen the emotional and energetic and spiritual musculature of doing multiple things at one time, because it's possible. It just is. I not only believe it, but I live it and rock it all the time, which is ultimately why I create these videos for you, because I invite you to open yourself up to that possibility as well. So what does that look like? What does that feel like? What does that sound like? Um, you know, nine times out of 10, <laughs> nine times out of 10, we generally know we need to be out of something before we're actually out of it. We know we need to leave a relationship before we actually do. We know we need to leave a job before we actually do. We know that something has run its course before we actually make the move to allow that to happen. And why is that? Well, there may be a handful of reasons. What it all shakes down to ultimately is an attachment. There's some type of attachment to what we have already deemed it will mean if we let this thing go. We have some type of attachment to what we have already deemed it will mean for us to say, this is all done. I'm complete. This doesn't work for me anymore. I'm a no. I've changed my mind. I want something different. I want something more. I want something less. I mean, you can insert whatever verbiage, whatever wording you want to use, but the bottom line is once we have been activated in some way, as you are very clear on now after having moved through fire season, once we have been activated in some way, we get to a point where we need to make a move. Something needs to happen because what has been disrupted and, and tossed around and bubbled to the surface, we know now that it's not sustainable. And so the question is, okay, what do I do with this now? Well. We put it to the water. We allow the water to wash away the old so that something can be made anew. Water is such a cleansing and healing element, right? I mean, we, we take baths, we take showers, we do baptisms, you know, we have rain dances. There are all of these ways in which, again, just like we've talked about, all these ways in which our verbiage and our everyday life signals that things need to be washed away and signals that things need to be released. Um, but we do not engage with it from the intentional perspective that Medicine Wheel affords for us. Um, water is so healing. Ugh. Water is, <laughs> water is so nourishing. Water is life, right? What an important slogan that has been for so many people. And sometimes it takes time to get all the way to that space of being ready to fully release what it is that we are ready to release. When we are in the month of September and we've got a foot in fire season still, and we've got a foot in water season, south and west. Most importantly, I want you to be open and available to the transition. I want you to be aware and be attentive to how your body might be responding to this shift in energetics and in frequency. Depending upon what part of the country you live in or what part of the world you live in, um, the seasons are starting to change at this point, right? Um, this is September. This is when a lot of kids are now going back to school or maybe have just, you know, have started going back to school. 
um, in September, potentially, things start to cool off a little bit. And so our bodies are feeling differently as they step out into the world. It's not the same sweltering heat. It's not the same dense, muggy humidity. It's not the same just fiery expression. There's a little bit of a coolness that's starting to happen. There's a little bit of like an exhale almost that's occurring. Um, as we get into the west direction and the water element, this is where the earth starts to pare itself down to be ready for winter time, which is stillness, which is kind of a floating energy. Right now, the energy is releasing. Right now, the energy is starting to break and give almost. So it's like fire season, jumble, 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 tight, 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 activate, activate, activate. Exhale, 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 exhale through September, through October, through November. So in September, be available for a varied experience. Be available to know that the time is coming, but it may not be quite yet. Be available to yourself in a way that speaks to this transitional movement of energy. And how do we know that energy needs to move? Well, lots of times we just feel really antsy. Lots of times we're just like, oh, I got to get out. I got to get out of here. You know, I got to get out of my head. Um, I need to move my body. I need to go for a walk. Or, you know, we just have this sensory response and this knowing based on how our body feels that something's got to move. Something's got to move. And the most important step to this process is simply the awareness that something has to move. And that is us starting to flex our water element. That is us starting to flex our west direction prowess. You know, quite honestly, we have a pretty serious attachment to crying. We have a pretty serious story around what it means to shed tears or to be sad. Now, let's consider it this way. What if the tears are just a representation of our energy moving? What if the tears are just energy being released? Because we cry happy tears too, right? And we cry tears of joy, tears of sadness, tears of overwhelm. And this is a piece that I really wanna hit on as we are in the month of September in this transitional space, in this teaching of acknowledging one thing shifting into another. I want you to ask yourself if you have ever had an experience where you just feel this rush, this huge surge of energy and you almost feel overwhelmed. And so tears come, but you're like, I, I'm not really sad. I'm not really sure why I'm crying. I'm, I, I don't know what's happening here. And the only reason that we have some confusion around that is again, because we think that tears equal sadness. And if we're not really sad in the standard everyday definition, then it'll cause our brain to kind of question and be like, well, what, is, what is happening here? What, what is this? What, how do I compartmentalize this? Where do I put this emotion? Where do I put this energy? And again, that's such an indicative trait of our <laughs> need to affix and control. The whole purpose of medicine wheel living is to understand, to learn and understand ourselves as the entire wheel and honor the movement of energetics through us and around us. And therefore we're not so stuck on being affixed or being attached. We can simply witness something going on. September and this transition space of the autumn equinox is what really opens the door for that, uh, opens the door for that witnessing and that observation. And um, there are very specific rituals that you can do right at the equinox. So the equinox, the autumn equinox in the Northern hemisphere is September like 20th to 22nd, kind of in that range of space. It has to do with the equal amount of light and dark, you know, on the planet. That's what all of these turning points and these tipping points have to do, the amount of light and dark in our system. You know, at the solstices, it's, or excuse me, at the summer solstice, it's the zenith, the pinnacle of light. At the winter solstice, it's the zenith or the pinnacle of darkness. The spring and the autumn equinoxes are the uh, equinoxes in like equal amounts. So depending upon where you are in the world or in the country or wherever on the land mass <laughs> that is planet Earth, 
it will be a very particular date. So that's why there's a range of 20th to, to you know, 22nd, 23rd. Um, in order for us to honor this transition and this shift, A, we need to be aware of it. B, we have to choose to be available for it, which is why I ask you to honor and observe how you are responding in this partial fire, partial water space. And then we also need to consciously choose to engage with it. Again, medicine wheel, when approached with reverence and with truth and with actual decision, <laughs> medicine wheel living and cyclical living affords us a connection and a relationship to source energy unlike anything else that I've known. When we consciously engage with something, it changes it completely. You know, quantum physics tells us that our mere sight on a thing will change the activity of the thing. So there's some type of component on a slide under a microscope. We slide it under the microscope, we turn on the light, that immediately changes the activity of the thing that we're looking at. We then put our eyes to that microscope and the vibration from our eyes, the vibration of our attention changes the activity of the thing. Why does that matter in this scenario? Well, because there is a shift happening. There is a shift from a fiery expression to a watery expression. And we can either be at the effect of it as this transition is happening, or we can be at the causal level of it. We can operate from a point of origin place in relationship to it. Lots of times with this medicine wheel work, for, my, for me and for my brain, it helps me make sense of it if I envision the energy, the fire energy, the water energy, the fall equinox, the autumn equinox, as a, as a person. Because my brain is so conditioned to need that physical proof of something in order for it to be real. Um, so part of what I do that almost like tricks my brain sometimes and allows me to take in the teaching and to take in the wisdom of something is to put a personality to an energetic frequency. So while energy inherently is, is not tangible per se and has no gender or qualification, it helps me receive it when I put those things to it. So in that scenario, I want you to visualize uh, for a moment bring to mind as best you can a fiery personality, a fiery person, you know? It's uh, similar to that movie um, Inside Out, right? That, that uh, children's movie where they have colors and personalities and they have an anger, which is, oh, he's already he's like a flame head, you know what I mean? So put some of that into that fiery energetic space, you know, put that into a person, into a visualization of a person. And then you've got that one. And then I want you to envision in your mind's eye a watery personality, you know, that, that releasing dynamic. And what kind of a person, what kind of a personality do you, do you see in that space? What kind of a, an experience, an energetic feeling do you experience in that space? Okay, cool. So hmm, let's, <laughs> let's consider if they are siblings, right? Because in September, at this fall equinox space, they share a space. And because, as I said, it's not just a, a clean delineation, an automatic line of we were once this, now we're this. They sort of bleed into each other. Start to tune into, feel into, think about what is it like for those two energies to be in the same space? Well, on one hand, we know that water like uh, puts out fire, right? It, it douses it, it snuffs it out. Okay, so water can ultimately kind of control some of that fiery activation. And then what about in the reverse? What is it that uh, fire does to water? Well, it transforms it ultimately. Um, and it transforms it when it comes together because it turns into steam. So even if we pour water on a fire, the fire is still having an effect on the water and it transforms it into a new form, a new experience, a new existence. We went from a liquid to a gas ultimately, okay? So this transformative space is what's happening at the fall equinox and if you so choose to be in deeper relationship with this work, you will be attentive to yourself 
as you are changing form. You will be attentive to your energies as they are changing form, changing frequency, changing momentum, changing expression. September is all about changing. <laughs> September is all about that shift. And September is all about allowing that shift to occur, allowing that transition to occur. Now, what that does is it ultimately speaks to your relationship to change and transition. If you tend to not be okay with things shifting, this may be a difficult space for you, but that's okay. That is part of your particular teaching for this month. That is part of your particular experience. And life is always designed and served up perfectly for our own unique experience. So maybe you have a hard time with change. Maybe you don't. Maybe you're somewhere, you know, on that scale in the middle, right? I mean, there's a lot of variations and a lot of options. Again, the focus is to be consciously engaged with it, to witness it almost from an outsider perspective, observing the fire, observing the water, observing yourself as a fiery activated space, observing yourself as a watery releasing space, and allowing whatever transformation that wants to occur, to occur. It is a non-negotiable that energy transforms. It is a non-negotiable that energy is gonna shift. And if we can get alongside it, welcome that transition because now we know it's coming, right? We're engaged in medicine wheel. We're taking these classes. We're listening to these teachings. Now we know it's coming. Okay. So you're going to get this email in the beginning of September. So September 20th, 23rd, you're going to section out some time to do this ritualistic thing that I'm going to invite you to. Um, when we can work alongside the energetic frequency and flow, it just means so much more. And as I'm saying it, I know you can hear that in my expression. I know that you can hear the shift in tone of my voice. And that comes from a place of conviction. That comes from a place of, I've done this, I've lived this, I walked this. I invite you to open yourself up to that possibility as well. Consciously choosing to honor this transition space will make the transition hella smoother. <laughs> it will make the transition more nourishing than anything. So for those of us who maybe have a hard time with things changing form, changing shape, consciously engaging in it makes it not so scary. It makes it makes us not want to grip so tightly. And that's really what the West Direction is about. That's really what the West Direction wants to teach us is that, hey man, sometimes things got to go. Like the river is flowing. We've got to go. We've got to let it go. I love to take my children to the river. I love to go to the river myself, but I love to take my children to the river. And one of the things being that they are little <laughs> is that I have to teach them about the current and that if you are not grounded, if you are not holding on to something, <laughs> you're going to get swept away. You're going to go down the river, you know, in the current. And from one perspective, from a motherly perspective, that is not something I desire to have happened. <laughs> and from another perspective, less attached to my human experience, Sometimes that is what I desire. I do want things to get swept down the river. I do want things to disappear, go away, be released. I do not want to carry around the things that I have been carrying around my whole life up until this point. And that's a continual process because each year as I move through the West direction, you know, cycle around, cycle around, cycle around, there's always something new. There's a different perspective. There's a different thought. There's a different attitude that I'm like, yeah, I'm so ready to be done with that. Okay. I'm so ready to be done with that. And sometimes the West direction is about leaving jobs or leaving relationships. Most often the West direction is about leaving thought systems and leaving beliefs that are outdated behind. We have a lot of protective mechanisms in our psyche, in our field. We have a lot of survival tools that we have acquired because we needed them at one point in time. And there's no shade. There's, there's no shade thrown at that at all because those survival tools got us to this place. The whole point of the South Direction is to activate those things, to show us our limits to our perception of ourselves, 
so that we can then decide, hey, this is the piece that I would like to be swept away in the current of the river, and this is the piece that I'm gonna hold on to. I'm gonna tether this one, I'm gonna anchor in this one, I'm gonna tie this piece around a rock, and let everything else that doesn't belong float away or get washed away, okay? That's what the West Direction teaches us. That's what the West Direction invites us to experience. And in particular, in September, for this fire water space, you're gonna to start to experience some of those things. And I think even in this moment, as, as you've been listening, I, I guarantee that there have been certain things that are coming to mind that you're like, ooh, I might wanna be rid of that. Or, hey, this conversation, this argument that I had, this is a piece that I need to own. So I'm gonna let my pride get washed away down the river. I'm gonna to speak to that thing so that I can anchor into a new belief system around telling the truth. That's how these things work. Some things wanna stay and some things wanna go. Being that we're not completely out of fire season yet, you may not have full clarity around that, but that's the whole point of the next few months is to gain clarity around that. And again, what does water do? It washes things clean washes away the excess. The sisterhood component comes into play. And as I said, the next couple months we'll speak more directly on releasing and then another month more directly on sisterhood. But the sisterhood component comes into play because it is in community that we process through these emotions. It is in community that we are held through our emotional waters. It is with our sisters that we cry, whether it's tears of joy, laughing so hard, you know, at something, or tears of sadness and pain and trauma. So sisterhood and community matter. Sometimes one of the toughest teachings about the West Direction is that we don't have the sisterhood or the community that we really want. And while that is an extremely tough lesson to become aware of, the only way that we can do anything different about it is to become aware of it. So as we move forward in these next few months of water element, West Direction, sisterhood and releasing teachings all in that component, let's take September, this ritualistic turning of the wheel, the month where we're doing a couple things at once. Let's take this time to make ourselves available for what it is that what wants to come forward. Because that's a pervasive teaching of Medicine Wheel no matter what month it is. Every day we wake up and rise, we are in that east direction of receiving a new day. Every day, day as the sun begins to set, we are in that west direction of releasing whatever happened during that day. So around the 20th, 21st, 22nd, 23rd, make yourself available for some conscious engagement with the movement of your energy. I'm going to take you through a very particular ritual that one of my teachers shared with me. It's something that I do not only on the autumn equinox, but it's something that I just do in general when it's time to release something and be done with some energy. I engage with this ritualistic um, experience to help move the energy out because there ain't nothing wrong with energy moving. It's only our attachment to it that gets us into trouble and causes suffering. But an object in motion tends to stay in motion, right? Like energy can never be created or destroyed. It does need to transform and continue to move.